A long time ago, I remember some random person on Tumblr saying that the United States' Germany first policy in World War II was racist. Because Japan actually attacked the United States, but the U.S. focused on Germany. And this was because, apparently, the U.S. was more interested in saving Europeans from Hitler than in saving Asians from Japan. But what if the U.S. did the opposite? What if the U.S. focused on Japan first? How would that be called racist? Well, easily, they would say, see, even though Germany was clearly the bigger threat, the United States was so galled by non-European military power that they focused on Japan first. Mm. So no matter what the U.S. did in that situation, it would be racist, or at least portrayed as racist later on. What are some other examples like this? That no matter what the white person does, it's racist. Well, I came up with nine other examples. So example number two. Doing business with Robert Mugabe. If a white country does business with Robert Mugabe, the ruler of Zimbabwe, well, they just don't care how much of a brutal dictator Mugabe is to the people of Zimbabwe. They just want to make a quick buck and don't care what impact it has on the black people of Zimbabwe. But if they don't do business with Mugabe, well, clearly they are anti-black, unwilling to deal with an openly and proudly black nation. 3. Embracing some non-European culture. If a white person paints a sugar skull mask or wears dreadlocks or has Native American paraphernalia, well, that's cultural appropriation and an invasion of non-white cultural space, and it's done in a cavalier disregard for this space. But, if a white person doesn't embrace anything from non-European cultures, well, clearly they are narrow-minded, and they clearly think that these other cultures have nothing to offer. 4. Gentrification versus segregation. If whites move into a non-white neighborhood, that changes the nature of the neighborhood in a process known as gentrification, which is a polite way to say colonialism and whiteness displacing coloredness. But if whites don't ever move into a non-white neighborhood, well, that's segregation, and it's their feelings of white exceptionalism manifest, and their feelings of superiority and apartness. Five, a teacher calling on a black kid in class. If you, as a teacher, call on the black students, clearly you are trying to humiliate them, thinking that they won't know the answer. And you're doing this either consciously or subconsciously. But, if you don't ever call on the black students, or rarely call on them, clearly you don't think their point of view is worth hearing, or uh, you don't think that they know the answer, and you probably wish they weren't even there at all. Six, giving loans to people of color. Now this is very simple. If you give people of color a loan, well, then you're obviously a predatory lender. You don't care if they can pay it back or not. And you are all too happy to come in and gobble up their assets if and when they are unable to pay the interest. But if you don't give them a loan, well, it's either because you don't think they can succeed because they're non-white, or you know they'll succeed, but you'd rather lose money than support colored success. Seven, buying from black stores. If you buy from black stores, that increases local de demand, which not only raises overall prices, but it will cause a shift in what the black-run stores produce or what they put on their shelves in order to cater to their white customers like you. And this harms black consumers in that area, and it is also an indirect form of gentrification or neocolonialism. However, if you don't buy from the black stores, well, then you probably have something against black stores and are against interacting with and being around black people. Right? Clearly racist, you only go to the white stores. Eight, trying to work at a black company. If you try to work at a black company, of course you are invading their space, and that's gentrification, as we've been over. But you are also pushing out black job applicants who probably need the job more than you and had a lot more to <clears throat> overcome and lots of oppression to overcome. But if you don't try to work at that at a black company, well, you know, what do you have against black people, huh? Nine, choosing to do a school presentation on an African culture. If you choose to do a presentation on an African culture, well, first off, that's cultural appropriation. And 
It's you having this colonial attitude that these people need Europeans to come in and explain their culture to everyone. For Europeans to document it. That is the only proper way for it to be documented. For a European, a white person like you, to do it. As if they needed a Frenchman to decipher hieroglyphics. And you can learn about Kwanzaa just fine, if not better, from the mouths of black people. Certainly it will be more genuine when it comes from a black person who has a long storied uh, historical tradition of, of the holiday of Kwanzaa. But if you don't do a presentation on African culture, well, what do you have against African culture? Okay, you know, you did a presentation on Chinese culture, but we all know that the Chinese are more similar. 10. Reporting race differences in poverty and jail. Now, if you report these statistics, uh, Clearly, you are trying to find data to prove that these other races are more violent or more criminal and otherwise inferior to white people. Right? That's, what, that, that's your motivation if you report these statistics. But if you try to hide these statistics and not report them, well, why are you trying to sweep the damage of white supremacy under the rug? So there you go. Ten situations in which, if you're white, you're racist no matter what you do.